just you know uh, if you recap for yesterday just we have reviewed what are the web services and rest apis and where we need to find the so web services and the rest apis especially web services are available at oracle web content as well in your developer connect from your application right so here review the soap web services here business object services does contain complete financial web services so whatever you want just you can navigate your respective application so that we can find a respective web services against your business entities so here one of the business entities journal just click on the journal so this is our endpoint url which is wisdom url so take this wisdom url okay and try to add your host name this is our host name so this is our host name just uh, uh, just one thing i having a confusion on this web services uh, we can use this web services for the both the inbound and the outbound cases right only inbound services we are yeah. not sending any data to anywhere if you want to perform any outbound yeah. api report or api reports so these services are only we are going to use for the inbound right exactly inbound if you are receiving any data from the source system the same data you are pushing into your oracle system by using these web services okay uh we can push there or to get the uh, from the target system results we need to use the bi reports right yes correct bi reports so in generally how we are working on outbound is nothing but we are uh, you know developing bi reports and enabling the hosting for ftp Define the uh, busting with FTP option, and whatever output is there, just we are placing the output into their FTP server location. Okay. From so whatever the reports we are getting from the, uh, our target system, we can zip into the our uh, FTP server, and from there we can send to the other system, right? Correct. Okay. And whatever the files we are getting from other system, we can put into the FTP server and push there to the. No, uh, you are you are you are not placing into any FTP server. You are directly connecting to their FTP server by using integrations. You are directly connecting to source system FTP server and trying to get the file. Okay. And process the file and whatever data is there, you are pushing into your Oracle system. Okay. means so these services we are connecting to the ftp server of the our no, target not this, no no this web services we are not connecting anywhere this is to create whatever web services are there inside web services we do the operations right yeah the general web service this is you know import generals this import generals nothing but this web service by using this import generals when you invoke this uh, import generals method what this data will goes to gl interface table okay that's it we are not using any ftp server and all means it, through this services we are going to invoke the our this methods operations according yes. to the methods it will perform the action right these are web services completely related to our saas application only this is not connecting to any you know source systems just we are getting the data in the format of you know dot txt or dot csv or dot xml or dot json format okay getting the inputs like this whatever data is the there these data we are manipulating same as to our import generals inputs okay just we are so mapping the data to the data format and this methods can be changed or it is uh, the method this operations i am saying yeah this operations yeah as per your requirement whatever you want just you can use these operations among these okay for example <clears throat> here payables are there payables i want to create only invoice header okay I want to go for invoice header operation for payables invoices here 
playable invoices does have these many meters. Okay. You want just you can use this operation. If you want to submit invoice import nothing but again it will insert the data into your interface tables, AP interface tables. Okay. If you want to get some invoice interface details, you can invoke this get invoice interface. And get uh, means from the interface table you want to get something. Yeah, it will pull the data. Okay. Uh, Vijay, basically by using this uh, services and this operation, uh, so we are accessing the third party system and getting the data into our system, right? Again, you are not accessing any third party systems right here. Yeah. Complete related to your SaaS application web services. Oh. This is complete your SaaS application web services. We are not integrating these web services into any third party systems. Whatever no, no, no. we are. I mean, whatever you like, uh, like a request is going for the third party system. Yes, correct. Yeah, request is going to third party system. Again, the request will go into in the, rest, in the format of REST API, which is custom REST API. Okay. Which is, it's not a standard that request. Uh, that request, we will get this, uh, the yeah. inputs. Yeah, for example, yes. so we get the data and we are in our system, right? In our journal case, yes. Okay, use case. For example, I want to create a journal from the CMN system. Okay. Create journal from. Email system, which is source system, which is source system. And target system is our Oracle. Okay. And your system placing file in Email server, placing Siemens yes. FTP server, let's assume. Here, placing the file is nothing but just, you know, journal data dot something txt. You are able to find one of the journal dot txt file in Siemens FTP server. Siemens will provide you, you know, FTP server details to connect this server. Okay, once you are able to connect the server, and you are trying to download this file from the server and you are processing this data to create the journals by using journal import web service. Whatever data is there inside in your text file, this data you are mapping to your import journals web service. Import journal web service. This data you are mapping to import journal web service and you are invoking this import journal web service. So that your genders will be uh, inserted into your interface tables. So the request is going to their FTP server, right? And you get exactly. it. FTP, FTP server. In this scenario, this is scheduled based integration. For example, let's assume it, this is every weekly based process. So scheduled every weekly, whenever uh, these frequencies meet our requirement, your integration will be triggered. Whatever files are there in this FTP server, it's automatically pick the files and process in our Oracle system. In between, we have OIC integration. Between OIC integration, this will talk with this system and this system, both source and target systems. It's clear? Yes. Yeah, so we, we can use the FBDA process also, right? Yeah, the same here. Instead of web service, you may implement. A so in which case, no, I means uh, in real time, we use uh, import journal web service or any other web service. If you get, you know, minimal data, just you know, just hundred records, minimum thousands of records. If you get, obviously, you can go for web service. If you get lakhs of records, for example, I'm getting twenty thousand, thirty thousand, forty thousand records. If you have high volume of data, obviously you can go for every day process because it's not possible to debug with a web service where it is failing. Especially. But when you're working with every day process, everything you are taking care by with the help of PLSQL packages, custom tables, PLC pages and all. Whatever you are getting the data from this file, these data, uh, this, whatever data is there in this file, the same data we are reading and inserting into one of the custom staging table. 
from the staging table just we are doing the validations whatever business requires we'll do the mandatory columns validation and inserting data into one of the custom fb day interface table <clears throat> and from that table onwards we are writing the data into csv file and zipping that file and uploading to ucm and submitting stage 1 stage 2 the whole process we'll do in our fb day process instead of web service Actually, this will be the manual process, right? Like the FBADA process when compared to the web service. Yes, yeah, it's a manual process, but it will support bulk process, right? Completely. Yes, yes. Yeah. If it is high volume of data, now I am working on one of you know uh, AR invoice interface integration. I am getting you know sixty thousand records in that file. Okay, thousand records. Uh, it's failed for only uh, first we tested with a twenty thousand records of high volume of data. it successfully went fine but when you in increase to 30000 it's failed it's unable to low, uh, maintain the data in the ics buffer area which is payload of 30000 records the buffer so again we need to split the data in the batch wise in the integration itself complete manual process we need to take care in our integration at a time it's not possible to hold the data high value high volume data it won't hold in your ics buffer area is there any like data limitation for the yeah data limitation exactly okay. if it is more than 10 mb data obviously we can go for fb day process only not only 10 mb even though for 10 mb also 10 mb also we do have you know uh, 30000 10000 20000 records should be there especially for debug purpose not possible where it is failing when you working with the web services the reason obviously each and every integration developed with the concept of you know fb day only whatever it may be any business entity if you take just will try to submit stage 1 and stage 2 and will manipulation the data just will transform the data whatever we require and will try to submit stage 1 and stage 2 for some of the cases we may go for web services if we have you know minimal data for example client is sending only <coughs> the file contain 100 records only below below 1000 records obviously we go we can go for web service because for every day process it may take you know complex design the integration flow itself complex when we working with every day process but it can support high level like, like when, when we face like these situations like is that our call or like uh, they will provide like uh, no they will uh, you are uh, integration manager integration designer architect uh, will design the approach do not worry about which process i need to maintain everything will may uh, design by your integration architect they will come with any one generic approach the generic approach you are going to implement across all the integrations even for error framework even for you know Uh, ICS design integration everything. First, they will provide you in a word document how you are going to develop your integration. Each and every step they will provide you. The approach, the approach would be generic for all the integrations. Suppose uh, they have given the outlines and uh, they ask me us to uh, design the document. Then, then what should be our approach? Means how we can figure out. Yeah. As my, yeah, as my knowledge, the design approach uh, provided by the Sova architect, whoever is working on the Sova architect, you know, mm. provide this complete design approaches to the business. It must and should require, you know, Sova architect only to provide the design and all. Uh, so that, and that's fine, Krishna. But sir, as a layman, uh, what we should think <laughs> like. It's a based on your volume of data. Okay. Just volume of data. If you are obviously getting more data, mm. think it, go for every day process only. Okay. Obviously, we can go for every day process. Everything is, uh, you know, we can manage with PL SQL packages by using this every day process. Complete our so, concept and advanced collections will be. Now our PL SQL packages while working with these integrations.
Yeah, go ahead. Okay. Fine, fine. Uh, okay. We'll see very in detail how we are implementing everything. Yeah. And understand why we are using web services, why we are going, why we are implementing everyday process and all. So this is our web service, right? Just copy this web service. So this is our SOAP UI tool. This is your SOAP UI tool. SOAP UI 5.6.0 is one of the version. Just you can install by using SOAP UI tool. You can test your, uh, you know, web services and REST APIs as a hard hoc, hard hoc process. As an independent, you can execute your SOAP web services. Okay. You just click on a SOAP. This is for SOAP, this is for REST. We have project name. Here you can provide the visual whatever you are copied. Just click on OK. It will try to you know import metadata definition. So this is our web service. Always you can refer HTTP protocol methods only. Do not use binding. This is Oracle using for their purpose to process your everyday SRU, to process your web service invocations. So you can go for HTTP protocols. In this, we do have some of the methods, import journal, some get entity list, get so on, so object attribute pins. These methods we could see in our web content. The same, import journals, get entity list, get service lost update time. Here also get service lost update time. So whatever they are mentioned here, these operations we could see here in your import journal visitor. Okay, this is your import journals. Just expand this import journals. Uh, in this tool, whenever we put the our uh, WSDL link, that gets automatically connected. Yeah. Automatically, it's load your metadata definition. Okay. Complete XML structural language can be loaded to your SOAP UI tool. So this is your import journals, one of the method. This is your request. This request, just click on, double click on the request. It will create a request for us here. This is complete our journal, uh, import journals method input payload request. Input payload request, just copy. This is input payload request. Just we can observe from the developer connect. Here tools, developer connect, and this is this is your methods. You can find methods here. This is import journals. Just click on import journals. This is get interface trans header which is service data type here this is your header data accounting data coding period name batch description batch name and so on so so here also we do have the same this is you know interface roles batch name batch description accounting period name just to connect minimize this GL interface you know sub node this is your root node this is your XML root node the same elements you are able to see here. The same. Okay. Now this is GL interface. The sub node is there. The same sub node just you can expand here, which is GL interface. The sub node again we have complete GL interface related columns. The same way here also you can find. Just expand here. This is GL interface. Just click on this. You can find all your GL interface related columns. The same way here also you can find. Just here, you can try to create a transaction by using this, you know, import journals with a 
minimal mandatory attributes or if you are familiar with ebd process and all it's very easy easy job to populate the data here otherwise to create a transaction from ui same as your ebd process and try to find what are the information we require in order to create or in order to fulfill a specific transaction okay now for our requirement to create a journal first we need batch name batch subscription so on so here when you create a journal from web service it's mandatory to, to populate ledger id ledger id it's mandatory and you need to populate ledger name also if you want that's it that is optional in the gl interface in the child node we have ledger name i guess Where will you have ledger name? Ledger. This is GL interface ID. Down it is there. Down, down. Complete down it is there. Down. Yeah, yeah. Ledger name. We we need to populate ledger name as well along with ledger ID. Okay. And so whatever default values is there, it will take automatically default values. So do not change anything. Is this? If you want to populate any override these values, you may populate with a valid values. Error to suspend flag, summary flag, something import descriptive flex field, so on. And you can populate complete your GL interface data here. Here reference four, reference five, ledger ID, period name, accounting date, user J E source name. So how will you find what is what what is represent reference four? Again, you need to navigate your This status not provided here. In your import journals, this is general interface header. This is general interface. Here you may find what is reference one, two, three, four, five, and all. The reference one is the name of journal batch. The reference one is name of journal batch here. So reference four. So not. as per our requirement what we need reference 1 reference 2 reference 3 reference 4 1 and 2 is the batch name description and 3 and 4 is uh, your journal entry name the description i guess reference 3 where it is reference 2 is the journal batch description reference 3 oracle internal use reference for the name of the journal this is journal entry name reference five the description of the journal the way you can find your the column descriptions what does it represent accordingly you can just populate the data here okay here zero or more repetitions one of the indication is there zero or more it uh, repetition nothing but you may repeat this node as per a requirement nothing but this node can support a looping concept looping just copy this copy this and you can you know paste again now we have two nodes now we have two nodes obviously we need two nodes right one is debit one is credit in order to create a journal the way you can create you know n number of nodes uh, like this zero or more repetitions nothing but the node itself does have a, a facility to repeat the nodes so in integrations what we'll do just we will use this as a, a looping node and we will try to you know uh, mapping the bulk data from your source file so that the complete bulk data will be map to you uh, this node the runtime itself it will try to loop the data and it will do rest of the process okay now <clears throat> we will try to pop populate the data in this journal so let i was populated for one of the journal
So this is your journal data. Batch name, so on so batch. Ledger ID. This is ledger ID. I'm getting from you know uh, mm -hmm. from uh, GA ledger table. You may get this ledger ID. And this is batch description, accounting period name, accounting date, user source name, user category name, and these are common fields. And this is GL interface, which is the first node. Reference for entry name, journal entry, and journal entry description. Again, period name, accounting date, user JE source, user JE category. This is interface group identifier and followed by code combination. Here, for this chart of account, we have only three code combinations, right? Just you can use three segments. Otherwise, here you can see in your main request. In your empty request, you may find you know up to 15 ideas, up to 20, up to 30 segments. You do have if you don't want uh, any others, just you can remove from your payload. That's it. I think for the single record, uh, this method can be used for the testing, right? Also, for the if we want to test that uh, data is sufficient or not, uh, we need especially for general, we need debit and credit. To fulfill the transaction, and these are, these are the segments. Rest of the segments I was deleted from here. Those are not useful for me. And this is currency code. And here, you know, enter credit amount which is hundred, and debit amount is blank here. So I'm not maintaining maintaining any debit amount here. This is reference one batch name, reference two batch description, and this is your ledger name. Again, repeating the same node here. Second node, the data would be same as it is same. Just I'm changing, you know, debit amount, which is 100. Everything remains same. Just changing debit amount, which is 100. Now, when you invoke this method by using that web endpoint URL web service, these two records are successfully inserting into your GL interface table. Any doubts on this? Just will try to change. Something variables. Just batch and batch description. You may provide the same. I think you are going to use further uh, in place of these values. We are going to use some uh, programming and logic, right? Which programming? Uh, means uh, in place of direct uh, values, we are going to use the, some variables or something to make this in the loop and for the. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Correct. In in our integration, we try to read the data from the flat file, and whatever data is there, we are converting into XML structure language. And those elements we are mapping to these columns. Okay. Fine, fine. And this is your journal entry. Something payables. Something journal entry. You may provide. This is completely XML, right? A complete XML language. It doesn't support any other language. If you uh, get a, a, if you, for example, if you are getting the data in the text format from the client, mm. you need to convert that data from text to XML, and uh, you can provide the mappings from those XML to your JL interface node. Both are in XML language only. So whatever data input data is there, just you can. Change your data format over XML. By using XSDs, we can change that. This is your general payables entry. And period name, same. We do have XSDN, XSDN. Okay, that's fine. And we may change group identifier here. One. Can add one. 
So this is my debit and credit line. Just copy this, and this is our request, right? Just copy paste here. Here there is an option authentication. Just click on authentication. Select add new authorization. Type basic authentication. Select basic only. Just click on OK. Provide your application username and password. In real time, they uh, in real time every client must and should follow one of the ICS user pass ICS user logins. They will share with you if you are working with uh, these web services and integrations. Which is generic uh, user for especially integrations. Uh, is there any rules specific for this uh, using this tool and? Yeah, we need integration specialist role, implement capital management specialist role, integration specialist, and integration specialist and human management. These two roles are required when you create, you know, uh, if you want to invoke these web services. Sometimes when you add these two roles, even though you are not uh, getting a permit, you, you will not get any permission in order to invoke your web service. At that moment, you may navigate your developer connect and you may add this specified privilege role. In general, integration specialist will support for all the web services. For some of the web services, it won't provide. For example, here Oracle is saying for import journals, we need GL privilege. Uh, you know, for import journals, we need GL run import journals via program called privilege. This role I'm not added to this user. Even though when you add integration specialist, we may get access to invoke your web service. This will take care, you know, all privileges and all. For some of the web services, it won't, you know. Support. The moment just you can verify here what are the privileges are required, just you can add the respective privilege to your user. There is one space is there. Why here? So this is our <clears throat> payload and this is our authentication. We are uh, submitting or we are sending a request to this web service with help of this authentication. Username and password which is a basic authentication. And here there is an option, one green color symbol is there. Submit request to specified endpoint URL. Just click on this. Here you can observe here. It will try to, pro here you can uh, you know, find it will processing. Once it is get successfully processed, you know, we may get output response. This is output response payload. This is called output response payload. This is your input request payload. <clears throat> for especially for import journals, for output payload is always zero. If it is written zero, is nothing but successfully inserting data. So it is successfully inserted data into your GL interface table. Just to be verify over there. This, this instance is your official instance. Yes, yes, yeah. The group ID just we are populated. <coughs> now two records gets inserted into our jail interface table, which is 925 today's date. And this is you know GP001 test batch. This is group ID. 
in one nine nine five six zero. Okay, the way you can invoke your web services. Now <clears throat> the data is submitted into your JIRA interface. Next, you need to invoke your which is stage two import journals. For import journals, again you need to run schedule process from your uh, tool schedule process. You may invoke import journals or you may invoke a web service call for your import journals. That we will see later. Now in this, let's see some of the failure scenarios. Here. Ledger ID just remove or I'm adding some zero zero here. Mm, I guess it won't validate, right? Yeah, yeah it will validate. So I provided incorrect ledger ID here. So it will immediately it will validate and it will throw an error. GL invariant ledger and you have entered you have entered an invariant ledger value and this is your input payload it's saying this is the error and this is your input payload so on so something oracle dot gbo dot exception something like this you will get validation errors if you provide you know wrong values incorrect values also you can provide you know incorrect period name something GL ADFDI invalid accounting period. So it won't create any records, it will throw here itself. And something category. Invalid category. Also, you know, source. Invalid source. The way you may get, you know, a couple of errors if you populate, you know, incorrect values in your input payload. So before inserting into interface, uh, that is getting error of, or is it in the table error row? No, it's, it's now data is not there in your table. Okay. Now data not there in your table. If Data in your table is nothing but it will return a response sorry, request payload as sorry output response payload as zero, which is in the result we could see zero. Okay. Just you know submit again. Here now we are getting output response payload, which is the result zero. Successfully getting executed and data is there in your interface table again. The same day. So uh, Krishna, uh, somewhere um that uh, validations are happening uh, behind that before inserting into the table some so some logic logic is, is written here right yeah this completely adf related you know framework there they are defined all these logics and all nothing but whatever you are providing the data again this data will goes to view objects from the view objects it will, it will try to validate the data. But it's not possible to verify where they are referring these and all. The view objects and how they are written these logics and all. No, it's fine, no problem. No, okay. Now your data in your interface table, okay? Let's, this is for import journals. If you want to get some entity list, this is a request. Again, just expand your method, whatever you want the method expand, you may get, you know, request. You can, you know, uh, invoke whatever you want. And this is our import journals, one of the requests, right? If I want to create a new request, this is my request, I want to create a new request, just right click on the import journals, new request, something request to click on OK. It will create a you know, empty request, empty input payload for us. Otherwise, if I want to clone my request, whatever data request is there, I want to clone. This is my data request, I want to clone this request. Just click on the request 
in the clone request. Copy at the request one. We create one of the data input along with your data. Along with data, it will create an input payload for us. You may change here and you can work with multiple scenarios. Okay, so before working our integrations, if you are using the web services, first we need to, you know, uh, successfully verify your web service in your, in your SOAP UI tool. At that time, you can know what are the inputs payloads, what are the mandatory columns, what are the additional columns I need to populate. In any client, before developing any integration, first we are going to test our web services. Once you are ready with all the web services, then only you are going to start your integration development. Okay. For one of the scenarios, just I will show you here. our Google Drive this is some of the web services document which is I worked on real time contract web services which is very complex web services combination of web services and the rest APIs. This is, you know, one of my client uh, web services, which is working on the contracts creation, the creating the contract from this, from Siemens system. My source system is the Siemens. Here, for create contract, there is a web service is there to create the contract. Create on the operation I'm using, create contract, and one of the one more operation I'm using, merge contract. And this is my request payload, and this is my response payload. First, we need to categorize all your web services as per your business requirement. Once you are ready with your request and response payload, by using this, you may develop your integrations. And create asset, subway contracts, and push entity means. This is one of the scenario, business scenario. Nothing more, this is one of the integration. In that integration, I'm going to use these web services in the REST APIs. This is one of the REST APIs. This request payload and response payload means after that, whenever you acted, then it generated, right? Whenever we are successfully executed, just we need to take a backup of your request payload and the response okay. payload. Okay. The way you can categorize all your business requirements and against that you can find all your web services against operation, whatever operations you want. Sometimes it's not possible to, you know, get exact input payload in order to fulfill the requirement. You may lock uh, service request to Oracle, Oracle will provide you payload even though they will not pay, uh, provide the payload directly they will conduct some OWC sessions with you in order to fulfill the requirement some of the web services are straightforward no here jira interface is straightforward but especially for the contract web services we may need help from oracle in order to fulfill the requirement even though they are provided the input payload you know it's not achievable Okay, so now <clears throat> whatever the operations are given for the import generals, uh, that is for single uh, purpose, or we we are going to use uh, inside one operation, the second operation. No, one less. You can use for import generals for only import generals only. You for cannot, import. yeah, you cannot use import generals in your get entity list. Okay, it's independent operations. Whatever you can, you, whatever you want, just you can invoke. It's not it's like a PL SQL function. It's that right, same PL SQL process. Okay. Inside this in, in there, this package, these are your processes are complete processes or functions like that. Yeah, that is not PLS, clear. <laughs> but in PL SQL, we may invoke procedure inside of processes, right? Procedure functions. 
Yeah. They are not possible. Just you can use an independent operation. So. That's well. like a... <laughs> okay, fine. Yeah, this is for general creation. Now our data in your interface tables. So in order to submit your import process, okay, Oracle is provided a web ser a visitor for us, which is ERP integration web service. Yesterday I have been shown right here. ERP integration service. Let's click on this. This is our visitor. In this visitor, ERP integration service visitor, we have get ESS job status, submit ESS job, and so on. By using submit ESS job request, we need to uh, submit our import journals ESS job. Okay, for that, just here, this is our ERP integration web service. And here, here we do have submit ESS job request. The same method here, submit ESS job request. Just expand this. This is my request. Just try to create a new request here. This is my new request. Here we have submit ESS job request, job package name, job definition name, and the parameter list. As a manual process, we need to uh, you know, launch your or submit your main import ESS job by using this submit ESS job request. So in order to submit your main import ESS job, we need job ESS job package name, ESS job definition name, and associated ESS job parameters. Again, zero or more repetitions, nothing but you may repeat uh, this element as many times as per your parameters. Now, our case import general site main import ESS job. Just here navigate to setup and maintenance and where we are finding our ESS jobs in generally. Anyone did remember where we are finding ESS jobs? Whether it is whether it is custom or standard. Manage, uh, manage, uh, manage here our import ESS job is main import journals is related to finance. Just select financial. Here display name you may search with import journals. is our import journals main import ESA job. This is your job definition name. Here job definition name you can copy paste and we need job package name. This is your job package and nothing but path. Okay. This is path and followed by the parameters. So what are the parameters we do have for this general import launcher? Nothing but import journals. Again, go to schedule process. Schedule new process. Here import journals. So these are my parameters, right? Date access site, source, ledger, group ID, post account address to suspense, create summary journals, and import des descriptive flex field. So whatever parameters are there for your import ESA job, we need to pass all the parameters while invoking from your web service. So here some of the default parameter, which is no, no, no is there. We need to populate these parameters as well, which is default as no along with your mandatory parameters. So here, this is my one of the request here. So here, this is my general package name, general definition name, and- uh, One question here, uh, Vijay. Uh, yeah. Job package name is fine. Uh, job definition name. Uh, means uh, earlier when we uh, ran the ESS job, then we only ran the import journals, not general import launch. Import journal, yeah. You are not observed, so here. Just okay, we'll open once again. 
general import launcher is your code import general name is your end user name that is end user import general name nothing but concurrent program name is import general and short name is general import launcher launch i think you uh, just add the two lines came there import generals just edit okay this is your display name concurrent program name indirectly this is name your short name and this is your path which is you know your what does represent here job package name this is this is job package name this is job okay. name executable you can say sorry you can say the executable the path <laughs> uh, no not the parameters so request tree is our parameter we may repeat this parameters how many parameters we required here these are four and plus three seven. These are seven parameters we do have now. Now, the first parameter name is data access set. Just you can copy XXC test USPL. So here I have the same XXC test USPL and the parameter second AX payable, which is your general source, and parameter three, which is your ledger name. Again here, ledger name and the four your interface group identifier. These are default values. You need to follow the same sequence while invoking from the web service. The same sequence, because here we are not uh, representing this parameter one is parameter list, which is you know your data access. Set. We are not representing any parameter labels here. Just we are trying to pass parameter values same as sequence of your ESL job. Okay. Now in our case. Our group ID is something one double nine five six zero. This is one double nine five six zero. Just changes again. Add the authentication, basic authentication, same authentication, and try to send the request to your endpoint URL. Just I send this to clear everything. Just click on submit your request. So it successfully submitted, and we are getting you know some request to payload. <clears throat> sorry input resp output response payload which is it will return the result is your request id something 2490119 which is your uh, schedule process id you may observe here here tools schedule process now Two four nine zero one one nine. The same here. Two four nine zero one one nine. Nothing but your main import ES job is successfully submitted. Now, you know, when you submit this request, just it will submit your import ES job and it will return your request ID. That's it. But it won't wait until your ES job is completed. It's complete asynchronous process. It's not in a synchronous process. Just it, it will try to submit your request and it will try to you know uh, return your request ID. In the background, your you know uh, programs are ESA jobs are running. Very first time it's running right now it's a warning status. Now see some other ESA jobs are running status. So it's asynchronous process. Now I want to get the status of this request ID, whether it is success or running or warning, whatever it may be. I want to get this uh, get this status, ESA job status. Just copy this request ID, and here there is one more method. Get ESA job request. 
here get ESA job status. Just expand this. New request. Let's click on OK. Here, just you can pass the request ID and provide authentication again. Authentication and send a request. So now you will get a output payload request, output payload response as which is result, which is warning status. Now our ESS job in warning status. Okay, our ESS job in warning status. So in real time, what happened? What happens? You are submitting stage one or stage two. Okay, so let's assume you are submitted stage two, which is import general, the same process. Okay, stage two. And we are uh, in a loop, we are checking whether the ESA job status is success or failure or warning. If it is success, then we are moving to further flow in our integrations. In a loop, we are keep on checking uh, this request ID status, whether it is success or failure, whatever it may be by using one of the while condition. For any import ESA jobs, we, we need to use this web service only, ERP integration service. For any import ESA job, the same we are using in our integrations also. For the stage one, you may use a VDA process or you may use your web service. Okay. This is for how to invoke ERP integration services and how to work on journals. Now, reports. How to execute, you know, BAP reports by using web services. How to execute BAP reports by using web services. This is your endpoint URL, the same. This is your endpoint web service. This is the endpoint web service, something FSM service, ERP integration service. Again. Here we do have by using this web service, you may create the report. This is create report method. Expand this. You may create the report. And you can run the report. So in real time, mostly we are using a run report operation in order to you know execute your BAP report and we'll try to get BAP report output. Okay. This is your run report. Let's click on the new request. Let's click on OK. This is your input payload. So in this input payload, everything is not useful for us. So whatever we can, whatever useful for us, just we can use rest of things. We can delete from this payload. Just copy this. We'll see in detail of this. This is your run report. Run report request payload. Here we do have. Parameter name values. This is for your report parameter section. This node represents your report parameter sections here. Something label, yeah. Here in the zero or more repetitions. In your item section, this is your parameter label name, LOV labels here. There is a node LOV labels. This is represent your para BAP report parameter label. And this parameter label value, you can provide to here name, not name. Here there is a node, one more node values. Here you can add your parameter name value. This labels, you can provide parameter label name in the values, you can provide this parameter value. Okay. And you may repeat these sections. If you want to add one more parameter, you can add like this. If you want to repeat one more node uh, for the item, you, you can. Now you can pass two parameters here. 
in the parameter name values in the item node okay we can refer lov labels and the values if you want to use some other properties multiple values allowed your parameter properties you can use and <clears throat> refresh parameter on change if you want you can use select all you can use template param this is not for you use null for all this is we can um, enable one checkbox right can select all or null that is yes or no you can pass and here report data you can you cannot change anything here by default it will take a reference of this you know one of the cid oracle will uh, refer uh, refer oracle will refer as internal purpose this one you cannot delete this one here report absolute path you can provide your complete report path along with your xto name xto name followed by report path and here report here size of data change load which is always it should be in minus 1 minus 1 is nothing but whatever report output is there you will get complete records for example if you hard code with 1 you will get only one record if you hard code with 10 you will get only 10 records otherwise if you hard code with minus whatever complete report output is there you will get complete report output all the records you will get if you provide the positive uh, sign here then whatever you have provide the positive number those records you will get as the output in your request uh, output payload this is your run report here first we'll see you know <coughs> one of the request here i deleted everything from run report just i'm used only report absolute path and size of data change size of data change download minus 1 this is my report path so on so custom aa gp2 invoice details xrpt.txt1 this is my report shared folders something custom aa and something gp2 invoice details rpt this is my report right so i am trying to execute this report from web service this is my report and this is the path and data i am getting i am trying to retrieve all the records just use these two elements provide an authentication and try to submit the request to execute this we don't need any data model on no no for even yes Only... job also we are using xd only right Yes, it's job also the same here. So once you successfully submitted your request, then you will get a, a BAP report output as a report bytes, report bytes which is you know encrypted format. This is your complete output payload, output response payload which is in encrypted format. Just copy some of the data here and try to you know decode. is your data just try to decode this is our data after decoding our data looks like this in xml tags complete xml tag so how you are getting this xml tags as the output nothing but in your report just edit this report your output type as an xml If you list and your default output format is an XML, or you may set it as CSV or text, whatever one you want. Yet XML, CSV, real-time scenario mostly uh, for data transformation purpose. We are using an XML. If you want to generate a CSV, then you can use a CSV also. So along with this, whatever you want, the default you can use data as an XML. so that it will return the data in the format of bytes which is an encrypted format and this this whatever reports bytes is there we need to decrypt in order to use actual data okay and use this xml tags your further flow in your integrations let's assume 
from source system we are getting customer account number but we need customer account site number in order to create an ar invoice but source system is not sending customer site number nothing but bill to site number but we need to derive this bill to site number based on your customer account number so how will you do that just uh, create a vip report and pass your all your account numbers to your vip reports and execute and get your all xml data and try to up, update whatever you are getting xml data into your custom table okay and use those customer account number and bill to site number in your ar creation process but we see here we are not using any tables right infusion in in integration we will use uh, custom tables okay you mean lookups or tables 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 custom tables same as our staging table in our uh, rtl for inbound process we are creating staging tables right the same way here also creating the staging tables and all when you are working with fb day process not only fb day process whatever it may be for example in our scenario here for import journals import journals we need ledger id we don't know right how to populate the ledger id before you know invoking this web service so before invoking web service first we need to get this ledger id and this ledger id we need to pass to your import journals method so how will we get this ledger id is nothing but whatever input data is there the, the input data you are trying to hold into one of the custom table and uh, get your all your ledger names and try to find associate ledger id from one of the bap report and pass those ledger ids into your import yeah, vijay vijay where do we create this uh, uh, custom table autonomous database that we will see in our integrations okay we will create our rms database and all for that okay okay before going for integrations i will share you one of the youtube link okay in that youtube link they will show you how to create a, this integration environment and environment and not only integration all your oracle products for a one month subscription early it will take 100 rupees for registration take one usd or one singapore dollar it will deduct, deduct from your credit card and you can register from that to get your oic environment okay can't we get free one no, actually possible. i tried with my, it got created but uh, i mean just only account got created when i am trying to create instance it is uh, like asking uh, that token authentication id something previous batch people get created these instances and all everything yeah i tried it uh, yesterday mm -hmm. it got uh, while uh, creating that in instance create instance right it is asking some token token if you have time just can i show one minute like uh... no i don't uh, you do have that login right yeah yeah just you can share with me i will try sure yeah okay just you can or you can ping here just uh, today i will try why it's yeah. not great. otherwise i will take a we have created in, in our previous batch okay you you to have that youtube link right i guess i will get it that i'm pinging in chat 